My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Heck yeah, man. Well, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate what you do. My name is Andrew Walsh, and I'm joining you from Irvine in Orange County, California. Oh, down the block from us. Awesome. So let's just jump right into it. I know you're in real estate, and I know you do fitness and a lot of different things, but I want to ask you a few questions. Yeah. First thing I want to know is, how do we overcome obstacles, especially right now, because there are a lot of entrepreneurs looking for tips and solutions to their challenges, and sometimes they just need uh, a little bit of a push to get over the hump? Yeah, that's a great question. I think right now, more than ever, you got to put yourself in other people's shoes. You know, it's great to be an entrepreneur. It's great to be out hustling and selling. But you got to think people are, are really going through a hard time right now. They, there's people who have a lot of anxiety, um, a lot of stress. And as an entrepreneur, what we can do, we're hungry, we're motivated. People need positivity. They need encouragement. They need, you know, hey, I believe in you. I'm checking on, in on you. You know, you may not be getting a sale back, but it's just that coming from a place of genuineness, caring for someone else, not expecting anything in return. I'm telling you down the road, once this is all over, those people that you touch and reach out to will think of you and be like, man, they were checking in and on me on my lowest time and they were there for me. I want to do business with someone that I know I like and trust and what better way to be building rapport and to kind of just, you know, radiate out positive light than right now as a young entrepreneur. I agree with that. I mean, that's just like the, it feels like that's just the right thing to do. Yeah. You check up on your family. Like, that's just, to me, dealing with your clients, whether clients, friends, acquaintances, doesn't matter. I mean, it just makes sense to be able to be in contact with other people. My other question is this. As a young entrepreneur, what is your morning routine? What are things that have helped you so far in getting that morning started and, and, and carrying you throughout the whole day? Great question. I do love your your Instagram, you guys are always talking about 5 a.m. And uh, when I played college football, we used to have to wake up at 4 a.m. It'd be freezing cold, go and hit each other. And you kind of don't like the morning, right? So I get into real estate. Everything doesn't start till nine. I'm like, great, I can sleep in. And I love sleep, right? Who doesn't? Waking Who doesn't? Up. Who doesn't, you know? So waking up early was really, really tough for me. So when I started doing the, the 5 a.m.s, I had to figure out how can I do something to get my, my blood going, to get me energized quick, because I'll wake up super tired at five. So what I do right away is I'll go and I read affirmations. So I have a huge list of my affirmations. It's all these things that I tell myself I am, because the first 20 minutes when you wake up, your subconscious wavelengths are operating at like extreme levels because you're almost in and out of dream state. So what you feed and put in your mind in the first 20 minutes affects the entire day. So I feed myself all this positive affirmation. Um, and then straight from there, I'm a big Tony Robbins guy. So I'll go into, he has a guided meditation on YouTube. And it's about 15 minutes, you're breathing, you're visualizing. I even told my wife, and I'll admit it here, I'm not afraid of it. I was visualizing so clearly like the birth of our new child that I could, I would literally, ha I had tears coming from my face because you're visualizing so hard in the morning, straight into uh, breathing exercises. And then I'll do prayer for 45 minutes. So by 6.30 in the morning, I am locked and loaded. My mind is in the right place. I'm ready to kick some ass. Yeah, man. I don't need to visualize my, the, the birth of my baby because I was there when, when she was, she was, it, it was a, it changes you. You'll never be the same again. It's one of those things that, you know, you, everybody talks about it. You hear it. You try to visualize it. You watch some on YouTube. You're like, okay, these people are giving birth, natural birth, this, this. But you being there, experiencing yourself makes a big difference. Definitely. I saw somebody, uh, they commented in here, make your bed first thing in the morning. I believe in that too. The one thing I'll suggest for people who have a significant other who maybe doesn't wake up as early as you, 
totally fine. I mean, I'll do my morning routine and then I'll, I'll wake my wife up later. And then I always, right after 6.30, I'm going in there making the bed, making sure the house is clean and then getting after it. I thought that was just a quick tip in there. No, definitely. Making your bed in the morning. I think, okay, so here, here's the, here's the, I, I think it's not even, it, we got to go one step back. It's not even the morning routine. It's the dedication and the commitment you make to yourself that in the morning I'm going to go do this. I think it's those little commitments that you make to yourself, not to others, and you hold on to those and you deliver on those and, and you make good on those. That's what gives you the personal confidence to be able to do more things because you made a promise to yourself and you stuck with it. So making a bet is from the night before. Reading affirmation is from the, the night before. And it might actually take some planning because you don't wake up in the morning saying, okay, where is affirmation? Let me find the affirmation to read. You spend some time putting the affirmation together so in the morning you could do that. That's like running in the morning. You got your shoes, you got your clothes, you got all your stuff ready, you got your water, all of that stuff. So when you wake up in the morning, you're just going. You're not waking up in the morning. Is where's my shoes? Where's water? What do I need? You know. Yeah. It yeah. So I think it's like even before the morning routine, it must be a decision to even have a routine. Yeah, I love it. You're nailing it, man. And I think too, you set yourself up for success. I mean, I'll have a hoodie, sweats right there by the side of my bed. So when I wake up, I'm comfy. I have all my affirmations in my notes. So I just type in daily affirmation. Boom! It's right there in my scripture. And it's crazy, man. You're so right. Because I know there will be days when that alarm hits. I'm like, oh, I kind of don't want to wake up. But I, I get up anyways. And you feel like a boss that whole day. I mean, 2 o'clock comes around and you're like, I'm kicking today's ass. You know, you just feel good. You feel juiced. I don't wake up that early every single day. Because sometimes I work late nights with different people with different time zones. So yeah. sometimes I'm staying up late. But here's what, what ends up happening. The days that I do get up early in the morning because I got something going on from the night before, leftovers and, you know, taking care of business or putting out fires. When I wake up at 6, I feel like by 10 or 11, I feel like I had already a full day. Yeah. I feel like the rest is just extra. Like I'm getting these bonus hours over here. Yeah. You know? I think the, the bonus hours are amazing because I know from about 5 to 8, I've already done all my prospecting and client touches. So I, I recommend for anybody who's listening, if you are in sales of any kind or you just want to reach out to people, the, you always want to be top of mind, right? So you want somebody when they first thing that when they do is they wake up, they think of you. When they go to bed, they think of you. So when you're up early, you can get your mind right, get everything done, and then start touching all your clients and prospects at 7 30 8 in the morning that's the first message they're seeing and they go damn i'm up early i'm grinding this guy's already sending me emails reaching out on instagram it's not even eight o'clock he's he's for real you know no definitely that that impression on people when they know that you're working and you listen here's what happens they may not do transactions with you they may not let you know. They may not. They may not call you. They may not email you back. But you need to know. A lot of people need to know that there's a bunch of people sitting on the sidelines watching you. Yeah. So it's not about the feedback that you get from them. You should know that that's what's going on because that's what happens to you when you get an email six o'clock in the morning from someone and you see that they send it at like five fifty eight, six ten. You know when they send the email, right? So to me, it's like the level of respect that they will have for you just keeps going up. And then over a span of period of time, that's why you see some people being in some type of a business 10, 15, 20 years, and they're not affected by, by, by what's going on with the economy because their base of clients are there and they're still doing transactions because of all of that equity that they built in from previous years that they were doing business, not just today. Yeah, yeah, that's well said. Very well said. I agree. So tell us this. What are a couple of tips that you think we should know, especially with this COVID-19 happening? What are some of the tips that you could leave the audiences with? Yeah, I would say your mind is so important right now. And especially for people who may have fallen on difficult circumstances or times, you know, people are getting furloughed. You know, some people are getting let go. 
um, if you find yourself in those shoes, this is the greatest time in the world because you're actually getting government funding or financial aid to support you. So in this time, I, th I say YouTube is the new Harvard. Learn your skill, master your craft, try something new that you've always wanted to do because right now you have the time. I know even for me, real estate still going great. You know, when things are a little bit slower though, I use that time to work for new goals, right? To create a webinar. There's always something you can be doing or learning to fill up your time that's gonna help you out, maybe not now, but maybe six, nine months down the road. You know, you gotta have that vision, like I'm gonna keep grinding now knowing it may or may not pay off down the road, but I know if I put in the work, it will pay off. I agree with that 100%. A lot of people should be using this this dead time before we go back to, I mean, I don't know if we're gonna be able to go back to normal, but whatever we call normal, whatever we're gonna go into five, six months, whenever, you know, the numbers are getting lower and lower and, and less people are getting sick. But you utilize this time right now. So when the timing is good and everything is back to where you like it to be, you, you, you get the ground running. You don't have to be sitting there and studying and doing all these different things. And listen, YouTube is like one of my favorite things to do. Like yeah. I've learned so much from YouTube because I get access to a lot of gurus that I may not be able to afford. I may not have to have access or the person, frankly, might not be available to teach me or coach me when, you know, if I'm sitting at midnight in my house, like they're not going to be available to, to, so that that is, YouTube should be every, and by the way, about three, four years ago, I want to say four years ago, I made the investment that I paid $10. I don't even get ads on my YouTube. Yeah. I have the premium version. Like I don't even go, I don't even spend that 30 seconds to skip ads, nothing. I just go straight to whatever video I want. It's much cleaner, much better. 10 bucks a month, man. It's the best investment I've done so far. Yeah, and I, I even challenge people now, especially when you're working from home, when you take your lunch, find a YouTube video. I always say, like, whatever sparks your mind that day, like, hey, TikTok is getting really big. I don't know enough about it. I'm going to watch a how-to 10-minute TikTok video while I'm eating my sandwich, you know? You take these little times throughout your day to schedule in advanced education, right? What you want to learn, you know, Instagram has a bunch of new algorithms right now that you can be learning tips and tricks on how to get found easier, you know? So I would say, you know, that's a tip I would give is, is use those little breaks in your day for more continuing education. I agree with that. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule being here. Stay safe. Looking forward to do more with you. Yeah, God bless, bro. Thank you so much for having me on. You're you got it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, later.